Good morning and welcome to the Daily Tanya. Today is Thursday, the third day of Nisan. Let's begin with Tzedakah Gedeila. Tzedakah Shemekarevah Sasegeula. Tzedakah brings Mashiach closer. So we continue today, chapter 39, where we spoke yesterday about doing the mitzvah with kavana. When you have the feeling of the mitzvah, this elevates the mitzvah. Brings it up, connect the, the, connects the mitzvah, the Torah and the mitzvahs to the spiritual, the godliness of the spiritual worlds. Otherwise, if we don't do it with the proper intent, then the mitzvahs remain here, remain in the external, separated worlds. And the question is, what does it mean, proper intent? Doing a mitzvah, studying Torah, Lishma, for the proper, for the sake of Hashem. Doing the mitzvah for the sake of Hashem. So, there is obviously different levels in the proper intent. What is the proper intent in a, in a mitzvah? You can do a mitzvah with the proper intent, meaning in the highest level, connected to Hashem, not for your sake, only for the sake of Hashem. Then in the other extreme, Sometimes you do a mitzvah with the wrong reasons, with ulterior motives. You're doing studying Torah because you want to boast. People should know uh, that you're here is a Torah scholar. So that is the wrong reasons. There's even worse. Sometimes you study Torah because you want to dispute the Torah. Obviously, we're not going there now. But then there is also people doing the mitzvah because they were raised that way. They were raised from childhood that you get up in the morning and you wash your hands and you say the blessings and you put tzedakah in the tzedakah box. You were raised that way. And you're doing it every day and you're being very careful with doing all the mitzvahs. Says the Alter Rebbe, that when we're talking about the mitzvah without intent that, mm-hmm. that does not allow the mitzvah to rise up, we're not talking necessarily about those mitzvahs that we do with ulterior motives or, or the wrong intention, even when you, if we do a mitzvah out of rote, out of habit, that also, that mitzvah does not rise up. You need to have, when you do the mitzvah, in order to have it rise up, you need to have the two wings. What are the two wings? Just like the bird needs two wings to fly, the two wings that elevate the mitzvah is the love, and the awe, the fear of Hashem, love of Hashem and fear of Hashem. And we are going to explain why we need both. So let's see what the Alter Rebbe says inside. Says the Alter Rebbe, goes on to proceed to amplify his previous statement, says the Alter Rebbe, Vehainu. This inability of one's divine service to ascend to the spheros, as we said yesterday, the spheros is the ten attributes where godliness is revealed in order to elevate that mitzvah to ascend to this level of the godliness which is in the spheros. So one is unable to do it. This applies not only where one's motive for engaging in Torah and mitzvahs is actually shelo lishma, which means not for his own sake. Meaning for some ulterior motive, heaven forbid. In which case, one is actually serving himself, not God. And his service surely cannot ascend to stand before God. So that for sure is not, you're not able to elevate the mitzvah to stand before God. But even in the case of a person doing his mitzvah habitually, that also is a problem. As the Alter Rebbe quotes the prophet Isaiah that says, it applies even if, as the verse describes it, their fear of me was like commandments of men done by rote. Pirush, 
meaning machmas hergel shel urgal mekat nusay. That one serves God out of ha a habit acquired in his youth. That you're serving God, you're getting up every morning and you're davening, you're learning because that's what your father that's, uh, taught you, that's what your teacher taught you and trained you to do it. Having been trained and taught by his father and teacher to fear God and to serve him. But he does not really do it for its own sake. Lishma. Says Dalta Rebbe, why? Because to do the mitzvah for their own sake, you cannot have it unless you awaken within you the feelings of fear and love of Hashem. Kilishma mamish. For it is impossible to serve God truly, lishma, for the sake of Hashem, without arousing one's natural fear and love at least. What does it mean, the natural fear and love? This, of course, we explained the last few days. There is the love and fear that is generated by the intellect. That's a much higher level to achieve. When you understand godliness and this gives birth to feelings of love and fear of Hashem. Or there is the natural love. That if you're not able to awaken the, the love out of understanding, you at least are able to awaken the love that is already there. It's like when sometimes you're, you remember you love your child. You can get, you can be upset at your child, but you know deep in there, inside, you love your child. You just have to awaken it. So we have deep inside the love to Hashem. So at least that love needs to be awakened, needs to be aroused in us. And again, we're not talking about arousing love and feeling a palpable love to Hashem, but at least it should be in our mind that would lead to do what we do. By bringing them out from the concealment of the heart into revelation, at least in the mind and the latency of the heart. So at least that is, needs to be done. If one cannot arouse his natural love of God to the point where it is actually felt in, in the heart, he must try, as discussed above, to arouse, to arouse it at least so that it be felt in the conscious mind and in the uh, subtratum of the heart. Meaning, even this low level arousal can produce a will and resolve to study the Torah and fulfill the mitzvahs. Thus, the resulting divine service contains, at least at some degree, the force and the kavana of his natural love, since it was this love that created the resolve which he is now implementing. So again, we are talking about the, uh, the love of Hashem that you arouse not in your feeling, but in your understanding. You have a conviction this is the right thing to do, and you do it. So that is generated by what? By the natural love that you aroused. If, however, one does not produce even this minimal level of arousal, the love, although naturally found in his heart, has no bearing on his divine service and cannot, therefore, do this service lishma for its own sake. And al Rebbe says, he brings an example, just like if you're going to do something for somebody else, for another human being, you're not going to do something for a friend unless either you love the person, you do it out of love, or out of fear. I mean, you can do it also because you want to have uh, something out of him. 
But when you do something, you're doing what motivates a person to do something is when you do it out of, you have to have a feeling in this, out of love or out of fear. For just as one does not do something for his fellow to carry out his will, his friend's will, unless he loves him or he fears him, so too is it impossible to act truly for God's sake solely in order to carry out his will. Unless the only way to serve Hashem, to do something for Hashem, fulfill Hashem's will, you must he remembers and arouses his love and fear of God to some degree in his mind, thought, and the latent level of his heart at least, if he cannot arouse these emotions openly in his heart. So one who observes the mitzvahs out of habit, however, lacking even this minimal arousal of love, cannot be described as serving God for his sake, even though his performance is impelled by no ulterior motive. So again, even if you don't have an ulterior motive, you're going to give a lot of charity because you want everybody to know how generous you are, which it doesn't mean that they shouldn't give it tzedakah if for that reason. But that's a discussion for another day. Nadal Terebe goes on to say, why is it important to have also fear of Hashem? What if I awaken a, a feeling of love to God and I'm doing this out of love to Hashem? Why do I need to have also fear of Hashem? So the al says, if you're doing things only out of love, it's not going to fly. Just the bird needs the two wings to fly. You have the, the, the two wings represents a love and fear. Why is it important to have fear also? If you're doing th- something out of love, at the end of the day, you love Hashem, so it's something that you feel positive about. It's not you're serving and, com- and devoting yourself to something greater than you. You're doing it out of love, in a, in, in a way, has also your... Uh, your existence there. Well, that's why you need also the fear of Hashem. You need to have the fear of Hashem because then you're doing the service for Hashem. It is something greater than you, something bigger than you. And you're doing the service of Hashem. And why do we need also the love of Hashem? What about serving Hashem just with fear of Hashem? That is also not good enough. Because then you don't give every, you, your all thing. In other words, when you're doing something out of fear, then you're going to do whatever is necessary, the minimum, what that is necessary. But if you're doing it also out of love, when you love someone, you give your all, your all entire being. So that's why you need both. You need the love of Hashem, and you need to have the fear of Hashem. This is the Alter Rebbe. Furthermore, the arousal of love alone without the, the, without the arousal of at least the lower level fear of God that is hidden in every Jew, in Jewish heart is not called service, as will be explained later. So So you need to have at least the lower level of fear. What is the lower level of fear that you fear? That your fear of being separated from Hashem. So that later on, the Alter Rebbe is going to explain more in detail this. And uh, this is what we take from here. To have to invest in our mitzvahs, to invest a moment to think, why are we doing the mitzvah? This is why we say the blessing in the morning. We say uh, the blessing for the Torah, 
when you say the blessing for the Torah, thanking Hashem for giving us the Torah. So that in, in, in as one of the Hasidim of the Mital Rebbe said, that you can say perhaps that if you have the proper intention in the morning, when you say the blessing for the Torah, that affects the entire Torah studying of the entire day. So when you do the mitzvahs also, you have the proper intention. You do the mitzvah, perhaps we can say also in the, in the davening in the morning, we say, L'shem yichud kutsha b'richa v'shchinte. Before we say the blessing of Baruch She'amar, we say we're doing all of this in order to unify kutsha b'richa Hashem and his shchina. We're doing all of the mitzvahs is that way. So when, when you have this in mind, this affects the entire day when you do the uh, mitzvahs and when you study Torah. This is the end of today's shir. Mitzvah Shem. I'll see you tomorrow. Have a wonderful day.